Well, I, uh, I decided to make this video today. By the way, there's no script, so this is going to get a little weird, probably. You can see this part I have on the machine. It's been on there for hours. Uh, even though I'm printing at 150 millimeters a minute, I think. Uh, anyway, so this thing printed all day yesterday, all last night. And I woke up this morning, and the top layer was separated. It wasn't, it was still hanging on. I had to tear it off. As you can see how much I lost, okay? And I'm sure you're all familiar with going in, and uh, maybe you're not, but uh, and editing the uh, G-code file to get it to start where it left off. You measure the distance here. And um, hang on a second. I gotta... Okay, I'm back. I had to... Somebody was at the front door. Anyway, so when you first thing I did was completely tear this off, and fortunately it was relatively flat, at least as far as I could tell by eyeball, it was all one layer. And I measured this distance, and I used a one, two, three block. Just because I already had my depth mic set up for this, and I measured down like that. Okay? Did I get that on a video? I'm not. Okay. And uh, and you get a dimension, and you do the math to convert it back to metric because all my tools are in inches. And uh, find out what the layer height is. And then you divide that by the step of each layer and you get the actual layer number. Okay. Now I have kind of a unique problem with this one and I'll get to that in a minute. Let me get to my uh, computer here. And um, now this is the part that I'm printing. And most of you probably already know this. This is. Ultimaker Cura and you come down here and you well if you haven't done this already you got to start out by coming up to the top and doing extensions post-processing modify g-code and then this window will pop up and you do it the same at, once you've done it once then you get this little icon in the bottom right here you click on that and that window pops up and you can see where I've added two options to the G-code. One is just to tell me what layer it's on, which is, it was useful in this case because I paused it and I could, and you have to look and see what layer it's on before you pause it or you lose that information on the display. But anyway, uh, doing the math and all that stuff, I determined that it quit on layer, or it split, I should say, on layer 346. That's, so uh, I did this, you, you click add a script, pause at height, and then you can change it over here. And another guy, another guy did a video on how to set these parameters. And... Uh, I kind of followed what he said, although he changed the X and Y park position. I, who cares about what that, where that goes? Um, uh, so you you change it. The default is height, and you I then you change it to layer. You put in the layer number you want it to stop at, and so on and so forth. And uh, just f for the sake of demonstration, I'll do this. So I get all this. These, most of these already have a setting in it of some kind, but if they don't, you can look at this file and change yours to pretty much what I have in here, and you'll get away with it. Um, I did not do extrude speed. I didn't change that. That was the default. I did add a retraction and a retraction speed. Uh, and this redo layers, the video that I watched to tell me how to do this recommended reprinting the last layer. So I, you put a one in there. That's what that's for. 
the standby temperature, I that's for the bed, and I bring that right back up to what it was. So when I'm ready to print again, I don't have to wait for the bed to heat. And then you close this, and then you slice it. And um, so I'll go ahead and slice it so I can show you the file. Now if you see, I typed in a little text in there when it said note, and I called it lay 346. So uh, I'm going to save this to, the fi to a file, and it's going to save it to my desktop in this case. And um, didn't give me the option to open it, so I gotta go find it. Uh, here it is. Okay, so now I'm in the file, and you and I go down to I just do a search for um, the layer, the note that I put in hit find next and it takes me down to where it's going to do the pause right this M0 right here that's where it's going to do the pause and so I basically back up to where it says elapsed time I left click on the line above it and then I come all the way back up here to the top and I do not let it redraw this program draws a couple of lines first. I don't let it redraw that and I can't do this because I'm holding the phone with one hand but I come back up to the top and I let it set up the machine max set up this set up this set jerk blah 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 come right back down to this G28 line okay now the problem that I'm have with this particular reset is that part is too big. It will not clear this bar to come down and reset the Z. And uh, now this is the first time I've run into it. And I, I've only been doing 3D printing for two, three months. This, this is my first machine. I ended up buying a second machine. And I'm going to go to that one in a minute and show you what I did. But because this one's running. But... Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so anyway, yes, no. So uh, so I'm new to three. I'm new to 3D printing, but I'm not new to CNC. I was a machinist for 30 years, and I, although I've been out of it for many years, so I might be a little rusty. I'd have to look up actual meanings of G codes, but I know what's possible, and I know you can cheat your ass off in the G code. On just about everything if you understand the G code. Now back to this G28 here. If you just put in this G28 this is what tells it to go reset X Y and Z axis. But if you um, and by the way I don't know if I mentioned it but everything below the G28 down to where I had it pause uh, at a layer, I delete. I deleted all that out of this file uh, when I redid it. And then I, at this G28, I put after the G28, X0, Y0. So it will reset the X and Y, but it will not reset the Z. If you put a G28 in all by itself with no X or Y or Z, uh, it will do them all by default. But if you put in any value for X, Y, or Z in there, um, it will uh, only do the axis that you type in and ignore the rest that you didn't type in. Also, now this I is a little foggy. It's been a long time. But if you say, let's just say you... Uh, want to move an axis out of the way before it goes to the home position I think if you put in say G28 Y10 it will move the Y to 10 and then it will move the Y back to 0 
whatever reason that might be. But I, I could be mistaken about that, and I can't see how it would be useful anyway. But I, I vaguely remember being able to have it move an axis off the position that it's in before it resets it. Um, now, usually you would do that in combination by doing all three axes, so it moves the one that's a problem out of the way first. But anyway, don't don't quote me on that little bit of information. It just happened to zip through my mind while I'm doing this. So so now so so we uh, have solved the problem of the Z resetting, but Z still needs to know where it is and. Uh, even though I didn't move the Z from when I shut it off, it didn't maintain it because when I restarted it, I had a crash. It was off by roughly a millimeter, and of course, it was too low. So, I what I did was right above this Z twenty, this G twenty eight. I put in a G ninety two, and I set the Z to the number where I wanted it to be. Now I'm going to go to my other machine and do a little demo on this thing and show you how I got that information. Uh, I'm going to pause here for a second. Okay, here I am at the other machine, and there's Bongo the cat. He uh, pretty much follows you everywhere you go when he's not sleeping or eating. So anyway, so this is what you do. You, you say this was the surface where the part split. Um, you would move your Z down. Oops, I moved it too far. And there's another downfall with this machine. When you tell it to go to any location, you can't undo it. It's going to go all the way there before it goes back up to where you wanted it to be. I think. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's enough. Okay, let me put this into a finer... Uh, movement so I don't crash so all I did was brought my machine down at the point one millimeter uh, uh, increments and I just pushed the table back and forth it's missing and I Bring it down one more. Whoops, that was two. And I did that until it was just tip, tip, hitting the part, just like that. I don't know if you can hear it or not. And I called that good. And and then. Once I had that Z set where I wanted it, I left it there. And I put in above the G28 here the number that I wanted the Z to be at, which I had already calculated off of the height of the part. And uh, so, uh, so that I put in a G92 and then a Z, whatever I want it to be, and it will set the Z at that number at that point. Most of you already know this. But either way, it got me around having to rehome the Z, which was a problem I thought I was going to have to scrap this whole big chunk of plastic out and just give up on 3D printing because it's, uh, it's got issues. As a matter of fact, they need to design a machine where the Z zeroes out at the furthest distance away from the table. I know that really can't be done because your Z0 is top of the table. But um, some way of uh, compensating for this problem without having to go through all this big nightmare. And somebody will get it down one day and they'll be the one selling machines and, and not the other guy. So anyway, that's it. I hope you found uh, this useful. And um, maybe I'll pause the video right here. Nah, it takes too long. I was going to wait until this was done and then show the finished piece. But uh, my battery would go dead on the phone by then. So <laughs> anyway, that's it.